On the other hand, bears do injure people, and that is a topic some bear advocates try to avoid. Although I'm not sure why. People too often portray the grizzly as a vicious killer or as Winnie the Pooh, when neither case is true. Sometimes grizzlies kill people, and in exceptionally rare cases, they even eat them. Those incidents are the focus of this book because that's what makes the bear so interesting. Such a huge part of our culture and our collective imagination. Bear, I'm sorry. Those incidents are often the focus of the book because that's what makes bears so interesting. Such a huge part of our culture and our collective imagination. It's good for us as a species to know that we aren't really on top of the food chain. To know that we must share the wilderness with creatures that make us open our ears and eyes and noses that force us to be more primal. As wildlife photographer Tom Murphy told me, being, a grizzly, being in grizzly country makes you more alive. And that's not because the bears are cuddly. It's difficult not to... I go, oh, this is always a tough one for me. It's difficult not to anthro, anthropo, anthropomorphize. You know the word. It's difficult not to do that to these grizzly bears. They are so much like us. They eat mostly plants and grains and starches, but love sugar and meat and fat. They stand upright. They wander. They are curious. They get angry. They can be jealous, possessive, and promiscuous. They spank their children, and they are so much stronger than us. Imagine for a moment bears with op, with a imagine for a moment bears with opposable thumbs. Imagine the evolution of an animal so strong, so intelligent, and able to grasp a tool or a weapon. You can find a small example of a bear's strength in most American homes, where the grizzly's ancient cousin, the dog, lives a sheltered and pampered life. My own dog is a 13-year-old Labrador named Mooch. Her teeth are chipped and soft, her hips hurt, and she can't swim like the others. She can't swim like she used to. Though, like a bear, she practices her bluffing skills on the mailman when he surprises her. She is a gentle animal, and the most destructive part of her is her tail. I had a yellow lab, same thing. Which clears off the coffee table when she's happy. And like any dog, she sometimes gets an itch she has to scratch. She lifts her back leg and digs hard at her ear or her armpit with her toenails, doing it sometimes for quite a while. If she scratched you or me that hard, we'd need stitches, even though she would mean no harm. Compare this to a grizzly bear's fight. I'm sorry, compare this to grizzly bears fighting each other. If you've never seen it in real life, you've probably seen it on television. They chew each other's faces and necks and ears, and they usually walk away unharmed. Or at least they walk away, and the loser has just learned a lesson. Such jousting would tear the hide from you and crush your bones, maybe kill you. But in most cases, a bear that attacks a person is trying to teach someone some manners trying to point out in the only way it knows that you have committed some breach of bear etiquette. Interesting. Grizzlies can kill each other and do so periodically. If they wanted to kill you, it wouldn't take long, yet death by grizzly is infrequent. Mauling, unfortunately, is less uncommon, though your chances of injury while driving to a trailhead are greater than the odds of even seeing a grizzly that's close enough to hurt you. Which spells, out that what, which spells out what I've tried to do in this book. Most of the people whose stories I tell here have surprised a grizzly bear, almost always accidentally. Through these stories, I hope that others can learn more about bears and about how to avoid attacks. You can increase the odds of avoiding or surviving an attack with a few simple rules. Make noise on the trail, keep a clean camp, never look a bear in the eyes, and if you are attacked, don't try to fight, especially if you are alone. I have outlined some cases where people fought in attacking grizzly and lived to talk about it. But in most of the cases I write about, in most of the cases I write about, and in others not outlined here, the people had companions with them. I believe that fighting a bear may work better when there are two or more people. Not because two people can beat up a grizzly bear, but 
because they might be able to confuse and distract it enough to make it go away. The flip side is that attacking a bear might make it drop your companion. Or might make it drop your companion, but this almost always makes the bear attack you. Playing dead, I believe, is the best response once contact is inevitable. Until, until that point, it is best to stand your ground, offering the bear your profile and avoiding direct eye contact. If a bear attacks your tent, the rules change. Then it's time to fight as hard and loud as you can to tell the bear you are not the easy meal it seeks. Guns, I am convinced, do more harm than good for most people. Unless you are willing to start shooting as soon as you see a bear before it even charges, and I cannot endorse that, most encounters are surprises and come incredibly fast. Even experienced gun handlers often can't react fast enough or shoot straight enough to stop a charging grizzly, an animal that can run almost as fast as a greyhound uphill or down and do it over rough terrain. Bears don't often go down with just one shot, and a wounded grizzly becomes even more dangerous. Pepper spray, pepper spray makes more sense to me, although it will not work in all situations. It is not, it is not brains in, a, <laughs> it is not brains in a can. You've got to have it ready, and you've got to know how to use it. Read the directions and test the can before you go into the woods. Trying to run from a from a grizzly is always a bad idea and keep in mind that adult grizzlies can and do climb some trees though they usually choose not to all of this is easy to say none of it is easy to do especially playing dead keeping your mouth shut and twitching not a muscle when a bear is biting you many of the people i've written about have analyzed the attacks upon them and i i report what they found to be their own mistakes i have tried not to second guess them with a couple of notable exceptions and prefer to follow the example of Barry Gilbert, one of the most powerful people I met while researching this book, a man who lost half his face to a grizzly bear, yet remains a passionate advocate for their protection. He chooses not to criticize the decisions made by mauling victims. When you've been on the ground with a bear, Gilbert says, then you tell me. I was well aware of most of the advice I have just offered long before I ran into the, the bear at Glacier Park that day, and I walked around with a red face for a while afterward because I had reacted so slowly and so ineptly, almost running before I knew it, forgetting about the bear spray and then fumbling with the Velcro closure on the holster. I had been working on this book for several months, had been watching grizzly bears and writing about them for years before that, and I thought I knew better. I did know better, but a 13 mile walk the day before had been hard on me. My knees laboring under the extra flab I make them carry popped and ached whenever the trail dipped downhill. I had a couple of little blisters on my feet. It was hot. I knew a man had been mauled on the trail three years earlier and I believed I was paying attention, but I was really thinking about writing this book and about driving to Calgary later in the day about a big hamburger and a cold beer. That's where he should have been, the hamburger and the beer. That's when the cub bawled and mom showed up. For the rest of the hike, I was focused. I was scared, but I was exhilarated too. I told every hiker I met about the bear, partly to warn them, but also, I think, because I wanted to tell the story. I had never been so close to an excited grizzly and probably never will again. Even though the bear never really threatened me, I felt lucky I had just seen something most people in the world will never see. I was glad to be alive. Like Tom Murphy had told me, I wasn't alive, I was more alive. Killing all the grizzlies as the swinish, hmm, killing all the grizzlies as the swinish among us call for would be a simple thing. We've got helicopters and night vision optics and high powered weapons that would make fairly short work of it. Keeping grizzlies alive, keeping them healthy and numerous and letting them act like wild bears, that's the hard part. It takes work and sacrifice and wisdom. It's worth it. This was written in December 28, 1997. We'll get to the next story here. That was the introduction. This was, pu this was published in 1998. Good to know, it's an older book. 
And the next thing we're going to is the actual book itself. It's the Mark of the Grizzly. And I think the story is... Treat it right. That's where we're headed. Love you. God bless.